Good afternoon all. Today what I want to do is um, get my Christmas decorations ready for Christmas. So this is essentially it. It's uh, a LED pixel ring with 16 LED pixels driven by a microcontroller. And uh, I recently received in a post bag these little surface mount microcontrollers. Here they are up in this container here. And it's sitting in a chip converter which turns it into uh, dip pin spacing, so it's sitting in the dip socket on here. So let's um, plug this in, switch it on, and that's working. It's got the code that does the anti-clockwise uh, white pixel rotation. Um, I am thinking of doing a pixel with a fading trail uh, after it. Now I'm not quite sure how long that's going to take me to do and whether I can do that before Christmas, but I'll give it a go. So the first thing I'm going to do is warm up my uh, glue gun, which is this one, because I want to glue this, which is the USB plug on a little board, uh, onto a NeoPixel ring. So let's get a new one because I don't need the um, connector on there. So let's get one of these. And I think probably the best way to do this to get a firm connection is to use glue gun through that hole so it'll run through the hole and spread out on the other side and through these two holes uh, ah, now that's going to cause a problem with mounting my chip which needs to mount in there maybe I should solder the chip onto this little board first before I glue it uh, yes in case the glue gets in the way of my soldering yeah perhaps I should do that now there's just one thing that concerns me here. I can't quite remember what the circuitry is around the reset pin. Um, there is a link on here and I got a feeling, I seem to remember that when the link was off, the reset pin was kind of floating around and may have caused problems with reset. Um, I think what I'm going to do is look at the code for this and see whether master clear is set to on. Then I might have to look at the data sheet. Let's look at the code first. Right, well in the code here, there's no explicit mention of master clear. All I've got is uh, internal oscillator set there to int osc io. Uh, uh, what that means is internal oscillator with the crystal pins being used as io pins, not actually using them in this instance. Uh, but they're available for I.O. They're not being used as crystal inputs. Uh, watchdog timer I have switched off, otherwise you get these uh, watchdog um, effectively interrupts, I think they are, causing your program to reboot every few milliseconds. You don't want that. But yeah, no mention of master clear. So I need to see what the default is, and I think I'm going to have to look at the data sheet for that. So here are the configuration uh, bits in the configuration word. It's uh, 16 bits. Actually, these four aren't used, so it's only um, uh, 12 bits. Now, this one here, M clear enable, master clear enable. I've got a feeling these all default to ones unless you specifically override them and pull them low. So it will be down here. Master clear enable um, is one means that it's master clear. If it's a zero, it means that it's a digital input. And I don't really want that pin, which is GP3, to be a digital input. I want it to be master clear. If you make it a digital input, master clear is internally tied to VDD, so it won't clear. But if you make it master clear, we could use it as a reset. And I think it's got a weak pull up. Now for that, I'll need to look at the GP3 part of the data sheet. And uh, that's here, GP3 or Master Clear, uh, invert Master Clear, active low Master Clear, so pull it low to reset the chip. Um, it's also VPP, which is the programming voltage goes on here when you're programming the chip. And uh, yeah, there's a weak pull up here. This is sort of a MOSFET type thing, which um, applies a weak pull up to the input pin. So if I leave it just open and floating, it should pull up and we shouldn't get too many problems. I think there are um, instructions on how you should actually tie this pin with resistors and capacitors and stuff like that, but I've never had any problems with the uh, 
master clear pin just being weakly pulled up to VDD. So that should work fine. It's probably better like this than it is as a digital input because if it's a digital input and you just leave it floating, then it could get to that sort of switchover point and cause a lot of current to flow as it sort of rapidly switches uh, on and off. So what I want is this. I think the chip will be in this mode. So it should behave itself out of that little circuit board. Right, so I think the first thing I want to do is um, take the chip out of this board. Should we do it with the power on? Just for amusement. Where are my tweezers? So if I press down on this, that just disconnects it. Question is, can I get it out? Not very easily. Right, there it is, out. So uh, pin one is VCC. Pin 8 is ground. I'm now going to solder it onto here. Uh, so for this I need the uh, soldering iron. So let's warm the iron up. Now let's zoom into this. Let's move the iron over there. Zoom into this and take a look at how this is going to work. Let's get in even closer. Wait for it to focus. And the idea is that it just happens to be the right way round. Uh, for pin one, which is down there, let me get a pointer, to go to um, VCC, which is there, V bus. So I can solder that right in there, so the chip's right up against the plug. Um, pin eight there will solder to ground, so that's on that point there. If I let a little bit of light come in there, you can see where I'm going to solder it onto that little um, pad there. And then this corner pin here, which is a bit close to that mounting hole, so I probably need to solder wire onto there first. That's going to be uh, the output that goes to the um, LED pixels. And this corner pin here is master clear, so that will probably get coated in hot glue and will just sit there doing nothing. So yes, I probably have to put a wire onto there before I start putting the hot glue on. So let's do those things. Right, I'm going to attempt to solder this because I can't see what I'm doing very well. Looking at the camera screen, so I've got no 3D vision. It's not going to be easy. Oops, I moved the chip. Has that sorted? I don't know. Right, I've just cleaned that up um, looking at it properly, and I think that's making quite a good connection. So now I need to come around to the other side and solder there, pin one uh, onto what is VCC. That powers the chip up. Right, now I'm going to put a little blob of solder on this pin uh, five it is. It is very close to, oh did I bridge that across to the other one? I have to check that, but there, so I can solder, I think I have bridged that actually. Let's clean that up. Right, and I have a nice big blob of solder on this bit of blue wire that I've found. It's solid core, um, which probably isn't ideal, but that's attached. So that's going to be the signal wire that goes to the LED pixel ring. Right, so now to unplug the soldering iron and plug in, plug in the glue gun, um, because now I'm going to glue this down onto mm, a hole, perhaps onto that hole. Try and make the glue flow through and become a sort of rivet and flow through these two holes as well so that the two pieces are anchored together. Then my signal line goes to D in and then I need to run VCC which is VBUS on here and ground round to 5 volts and ground and that should be it. Right, let's put some uh, hot glue on here. Now there's a little via there, so I kind of want to cover that via as well um, because I don't want... So I want to spread this out quite wide. Um, oh, that's going to set really quickly. Let's get rid of the string. And I want to press this down onto there and hope that the glue pushes through all the relevant holes and creates a good sort of rivet shaped bond. Well that's gone on, got two nice little rivets there. Oh yeah that's a quite a nice rivet shape there. So that should hold I hope. Now it's just a case of tacking on 
uh, this wire to DN and then another couple of wires to 5 volts on ground. Let's do it! So I'll cut that one there and then I've got to strip that back somehow without putting too much strain on the corner pin of the chip there. Yeah, that's always tricky. I don't need much wire showing. Oh yeah, that's good. Right, let's solder this on here. Solder, I should say. I'm British. I should say solder. And um, I'll tin another piece of this blue wire. I might as well use it since I've got it. Like so. And oh, let's knock the major part of that solder blob off. Let's stick that on V bus, which is my five volts. Like so. And then bend that round uh, to five volts, which is there. Right, that's my five volts. I can't believe the light's going already. But then I suppose it is getting quite close to the winter solstice, the 21st of December, or is it the 20th this year? I can never remember which day it is. Right, so now we need a wire from ground over here to ground, which is a shame because it's not going to follow that nice looping arrangement. Right, that's the third and final wire. Let's just tin that. Pre-tin the ground point and then just bend that into place and solder it on. Now, is this going to work? Will this video get uploaded and shown or will it be consigned to the failures bin? Well, let's try it. Let's plug in the power bank. Is it that way around or is it that way around? It's that way around. And switch it on. Well, that's a bit weird. I wonder if that is something to do with the master clear. If I touch it, maybe that would help. Hmm. Well, there's something very strange going on there. Let's try and debug it. Right. So what to do with this? Um, we're definitely getting data streaming out of the chip because we're getting sort of activity here. But why is it not doing what it's meant to do and circling around the pixel ring? I did think about 100N capacitor. Here's a 100N capacitor across VCC and ground. Doesn't seem to make any uh, noticeable difference. And in any case, there's a little capacitor there. This thing shuts off because it's not detecting really that much current being used. There's a little capacitor there next to each of these LED pixels. So there's plenty of capacitance around here. Um, I could try a capacitor across here, but I don't think that's going to make any difference. Let's see if I can uh, poke the legs on there. Right up close to the chip. No, it doesn't seem to make any difference. So no, not that. Um, different power bank maybe with... Uh, a different voltage that will probably turn out to be. No, that doesn't make any difference. Now we've got a quick charge three socket here as well, which might be a slightly different voltage. And that still doesn't make any difference. It's still doing this weird random flashing. So it doesn't look like it's voltage or noise or anything like that. Did I cook the chip um, when I soldered it onto these connections here? And how might I have done that? Um, is it this master clear thing? Let's bring the camera down a little bit. Let's try connecting master clear to ground, which is like that. Well, that certainly resets the CPU. Let's pull master clear up to VCC with the tweezers. VCC is there. And that doesn't seem to do anything. So I don't think it's master clear floating about. Right, I've desoldered the um, data line which is there and now I'm going to put this on here so that VCC and ground make a connection and oh, I think it needs to be switched on and uh, data and if I can get it right this ring is working. So I think the chip's alright I think we've got a dodgy 
uh, ring of LED pixels here. That's a nuisance because, um, yeah, that's a nuisance because I've already glued that onto there. I suppose I could try and break it off. So have they sent me a dodgy pixel ring? I'll be really cross if they have. And I'm going to have to try and um, break this away. So, yeah, that's come off. Break the glue bond. And um, basically glue this to another ring. So I've got another ring here and I'm just holding these three connections on. And yeah, that is circling round. So it was the LED pixel ring that was faulty. Would you Adam and Eve it? Right, so uh, unplug the soldering iron back to the heat gun to glue this thing back on. Well, I certainly didn't expect to be doing debugging. I thought this was going to be a really short video. But anyway, this one should work. Um, oh, I've unplugged the soldering iron now. So I'll glue that on and then I'll solder the connections and we should be good. While I'm here, I might as well just break off these little uh, bridging pieces which they haven't snapped off for me, so I can do it like that. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, that's bad, isn't it, that you get a dodgy ring of pixels, especially when you're videoing your Christmas decoration video. Now, if you're thinking, why didn't I get the scope out and scope the signal coming out of here? Well, I used to be a field service engineer, and in that industry, when somebody's got a printing machine, which was what I worked on, and it's not working and they're losing money fast, you don't mess about. You have to find solutions quickly. And swapping in and out component parts, like swapping in and out the uh, main computer board, which is what that is effectively, swapping in and out um, a replacement display board, that was part and parcel of the job. Just had to get it done quick. Now, I suppose I should go back to Alice really and say, you sold me a dud. Neo pixel ring, it doesn't work, I've got video evidence and all that sort of thing. But my situation is slightly different. I mean, the fact that I received a dud makes this video more interesting, so I can't really complain, can I? Right, so I think this has warmed up enough. Let's put uh, a blob of glue on here. Go for this again. Well, I wonder if that's warm enough, actually. Let's do that as quick as I can. Press that down on there. The glue pokes through the holes. You don't want to get it on your fingers because it really hurts because I've done that before now. Right, soldering iron's warm. Let's just solder these on. Now you'll notice I've switched to artificial light because the light level has got so low now that I can't see what I'm doing and neither can the camera. Get on there. And you get on there. So, VBUS, 5 volts, ground, ground, data in. Let's power that up. I think it was uh, that way around with the button on my power bank at the front. Oh, yeah. Fixed. In fact, let's turn this light off. Yeah. And I think that looks good, don't you? Self-contained rotating pixel. Be nice if I had that uh, trail fade, wouldn't it? And uh, yeah, so there it is. Microcontroller, little pick microcontroller soldered straight across the um, USB connector there. And we end up with a very nice self-contained, uh, okay, the programming's a bit basic, rotating light Christmas decoration. Let's see what it looks like in the lounge. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good, really. I mean, we've got the uh, illuminated tree and we've got uh, some stockingy thing down there and some reindeer and a ho, ho, ho. And my lead pixel ring. Merry Christmas.